Hello, I'm Rufus Olivier Jr., bassoonist with the San Francisco Opera, San Francisco Ballet, and formerly San Francisco Symphony for over 40 years. I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location. I call this my bassoon cave. I'm here talking to you because my manager, Rebecca Jackson, told me to be here and I never like to cross her. You know, I'm often asked why I picked the bassoon. Well, it picked me. I thought I was going to play the oboe. But the guy who hands out instruments in junior high said, take this bassoon, we're out of oboes. Hmm. I knew right away that it was going to work out just fine. I don't know why, but it just clicked. Everything clicked. I like to call my career a bulletin board career. All of my lessons were from PTA or special grants that I had seen on bulletin boards in school. My parents never paid a penny for lessons. I've been playing all my life from about 12 years old on in almost every type of music. My love of classical music comes from listening to my sister Beverly play her violin night and day. She's older, sorry Bev, so I don't know when I noticed. It was just there. It was just always there. My dad, Rufus Sr., was a saxophone player before World War II, so he always was a support and teacher to me, and his daily work ethic inspired me to this day. Along with my dad, musicians like John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, Wes Montgomery, as well as numerous singers, bands, and orchestras inspired me. Now, there's a saying, Johnny does best what Johnny does most. I'll say it again. Johnny does best what Johnny does most. And that means practice, basically. Repetition. Whatever you do, you can apply this to math, English, a foreign language. I apply it to my bassoon. Repetition is my friend. In other words, I have to go over difficult passages or fingerings. Things like that. Sometimes I have to just sit in a room and play scales. Sometimes I have to just play long tones. And most of the times I do this all in one sitting. It may be over a few hours or as long as it takes. Long tones, oh my goodness, the most boring exercise you could ever do, and maybe one of the most helpful. You imagine just playing one note after the other, long, oh my. After a while you get used to it, it becomes, it almost becomes a meditation. Now the only reason why I, I do this when I put uh, exercises, these scales, these long tones, is so when I have to play music, I'm in control of the music. I have to be in control of the music to make music, to do what I want to do. Now, there's one more thing we must do as professionals to play. And that is we must suit up. We have to go to work in a uniform just like anybody else. Everyone has a uniform when we work and I do too. So this is the daytime so I'm going to put on a long tie. And long tie is used for matinees. And in the evenings a black bow tie is used and we wear tuxedos. Let's see here. 
So I now will put on a coat. Excuse me, excuse me. I dress in front of you. And now I've gone from husband, father, gardener to bassoon man. And this is the way professionals wear. Every day I wear a tuxedo at night, white tie and tails at night, and long tie on matinees. I was always told that if you dress sharp, you will play sharp. <laughs> Somebody named Maida told me that, I don't know. One of the Zubins or something like that. Anyway, so I go to work and I play things like this. like that. As you know, the bassoon is a double reed instrument. And since I'm in my bassoon cave, I'm going to give you a look at what I must do to make a reed, a double reed. Now, I have to get this thing from this tube of cane all the way to the actual double reed that you play on. There's a number of processes. First, I split this, cut this into three pieces. I gouge it out. We have this cane here, piece of cane. It's hard to see sometimes. Then we shape it. We have to have the shape. We fold it over on a tool like this. This is a shaper. Wrap the ends and what I have, what we call a cocoon or blank, read blank. Cut the tip, wrap it in string, and I end up with this. If you look over my shoulder here, you can see some of the machines. The gouging machine that gouges out some of the cane. The pre-gouger takes out the bulk of cane. The profiler that cuts off the bark on the outside of the cane. A little tip cutter, beautiful little guillotine device that boop, cuts the tip off. And one of my favorite machines, the tip profiler. Most of the machines work in this fashion. They all have little blades in them and they remove cane or bark that way. Now when I first started making reeds in school, junior high, high school, it was done mostly with just a knife. Over the years things were actually invented that helped me make better reeds and help the process. So I can get a product like this and have things made in advance before going to work. Now you probably know more about bassoon reeds than anybody you know. You know, at a time like this, when we all have time to reflect and think of our global situation, I'm reminded of a few things. One, is that we are all the same. Two, when all else shuts down, it's the arts that keep us going. Music, acting, painting, dance, science is what's holding the world together. The one thing that the universe remembers are the arts. It shows man and womankind at its best. And if you're looking at this, I think you already know that. We're going to get through it. And we're all going to get through it together. And uh, I just want to thank you all for allowing me to show you a little part of my professional life as a bassoon player. You take care and maybe we'll meet you. You know, I'd love to meet all of you one day. Alrighty.